hello, and welcome back to the Six Five Summit. I'm Shelley Kramer, one of the founding partners of Futurum Research, and on behalf of all of us at Futurum and more insights, we're glad to have you. In this keynote session, Oliver Schabenberger from SAS and Sam George from Microsoft are going to explore how making technology and the IoT accessible to all is essential to enabling organizations to not only remain relevant, but to also reap the benefits of innovation. And this is applicable to businesses of all sizes and particularly salient today. Without further ado, let's get to it and hear what they have to say. The summit asks the question, what is the next wave of technology transformation? Well, maybe we are living it and are riding the wave right now. We went into 2020 thinking about digital transformation and how it could help us not just to do things better, but to do better things. And here we are away from the office, stuck at home, doing things digitally. 2020 did not take our eyes off digital transformation. It provided focus. Disruption is a powerful forcing function. The technology trends that are driving progress right now are connectivity and digitization. We're learning how to do things digital and virtual instead of analog and physical. Where we have choices, we often find that digital and virtual is the better way. Sometimes it's the only way. Connectivity facilitates that. And when I think of connectivity, it's in a very broad sense. Being connected to the cloud allows me to take my work anywhere. Being connected to my customers allows me to do my business. Being connected to, do, to my machines, factories, and trucks allows me to operate that business. And being connected to my employees allows me to lead the teams. Digital transformation turns our world into data and connectivity drowns us in data. So it's no surprise that analytics, the science of deriving insight from data, and AI, artificial intelligence, the science of building systems that can perform human tasks, they are becoming strategic assets for organizations. It's also no surprise that we respond to the volume and velocity of data with increased automation. There's a massive opportunity here for disruption. Imagine the telco company that uses connectivity to evolve from a provider of phone, cable, and internet services into a steward of the data-driven digital lifestyle. But that's not the idea or the next wave of technology we want to talk about. Sam and I are thinking of two waves, democratization of technology and connected environments. I'll take the first one. Democratization of technology in the service of digital transformation is a cornerstone of a strategic partnership between SaaS and Microsoft that we announced last month. What do we mean by that? Today, we are training people to design, build, install, and explain technology for us and to us. The software engineer, the IT specialist, the site reliability engineer, the data scientist, we consume the results of their work, a recommendation engine, an application, a service, a model. But this does not scale to the level we need. There are too many consumers and not enough producers. Speaking to customers trying to advance their digital transformation, they are telling us, I cannot find the talent to analyze the data and build the systems. I'm struggling with making technology operational. And there's such a bewildering array of tools. My IT department is now turned into a systems integrator. So how can we close these gaps and remove the barriers? Well, training. Simplification, automation, and integration are obvious ways. But just think about training. It seems so obvious, but it is not just about educating more engineers and data scientists. Instead of training people that understand technology, we can shift to training technology that understands us. Gartner calls this the move from technology literate people to people literate technology. And you can see the beginnings of this wave in software that understands natural language, recognizes objects and faces, makes recommendations, predicts health outcomes, and reacts in real time by sensing the natural world. You can see the beginnings of this wave in citizen data scientists and citizen application developers. They use visualization, low-code and no-code environments to build models and apps. So the goal is to democratize technology not just to the point where everyone can consume it, but where everyone can help build it. Now, if I think about applications, among the potentially more, more complex ones are digital applications in the Internet of Things, IoT. 
because they have everything. Data at the edge, data in the cloud, sensors, networks, devices, digital twins, analytics, and AI. Sam, how does the democratization of technology take shape in IoT applications? And how does this connect to the second wave in technology, connected environments? Well, thanks, Oliver. You're, you're absolutely right that IoT solutions have tremendous amounts of value uh, to customers that have successfully executing, executed those. Um, and a typical journey that we see is customers starting to connect basic sensors, learning something about the physical world, to analyzing those and finding insights from them, and then ultimately transforming, transforming business models, transforming their business. Um, and as you rightly point out, this really used to be in the realm of expert level because it required most areas of compute uh, and expertise in all of them, from cloud and distributed computing to embedded development and edge computing to security and connectivity and data and analytics and machine learning and more. So Microsoft, we have a long history of democratizing very complex areas of technology and making those broadly available. That's what we've done many, many times before us over the last decades. We made a tremendous amount of stride, a tremendous amount of progress across our Azure portfolio, across things like the Power Platform. Um, and what we've really been focused on is democratizing this technology, exactly as you say, making it so that technology adapts to people instead of the other way around. Now, we really focus on democratizing uh, in two ways. One is obviously with technology, but the other, and incredibly important, is with partnerships. And that's why the partnerships with SaaS is so important. So we're starting to see, in addition to um, this, this technique of IoT, we're starting to see the beginning of a new wave. And that's what we really wanted to call out as the second big idea that's happening. And that bears a little bit of explanation. Over the last five years, what we've been seeing is customers really taking advantage of Internet of Things for connecting assets, for finding insights from them, for improving those assets and products, for predicting their maintenance so they can ensure zero downtime or predictable downtime. What we're starting to see is this emergence of a new pattern where instead of connecting just to assets, you're starting to connect to entire environments. And that environments covers everything from smart cities to smart factories, to smart stadiums, to smart energy distribution grids and more, where it's no longer just the sensor that you're interested in and the asset that it's monitoring, but the entire environment. And that really requires new levels of partnership like the one that we have with SAS. I think there's a great example in our joint win uh, with the town of Cary. And I think that's a great one for us to talk through. Yeah, Sam, absolutely right. We have kind of laid out a very ambitious vision here, connected environment systems of systems that you know holistically understand the city, the municipality, the hospital, the company, operated by technology that's easy to use, integrated, and build with, people-friendly technology. Sounds like science fiction, but as you said, it's not. It's happening today. And the town of Cary is a really, really good example where, where those waves are coming together. So let me set up the set the stage here. The problem is municipalities are, around the world are at risk of flooding from natural events and unnatural events as well, like the water main break. And they lack visibility into the factors such as rising water levels, and that leaves the cities unprepared. So their response is often reactive rather than proactive. So the town of Cary in North Carolina has implemented a flood preparedness and response system that combines real-time water level data from solar powered sensors with weather data and in the cloud and machine learning models to help predict flooding events and to raise alerts. So the goals of the projects are to become more situationally aware, to automate the notifications to, to personnel and to town staff to alert citizens, to provide data also to downstream municipalities and entities and to predict future events. So automated alerting, models that continuously update and improve based on real-time and historical data, plug and play applications from pre-built components that easily integrate and standardize. It's real, it's happening right now. And because of this low code, no code framework with the right building blocks, the town can decide whether they wanna create dashboards and work independently with the resources they already have, or whether they elect to subscribe to the solution and let it be fully managed, for example, by us. That is real democratization. You have a choice and you're not, you, you're not held back. 
you know, by the, the resources and the technology you have. And we put a lot of emphasis into integrating all this together. So you start with a platform, but then you see all these other opportunities for to grow this into, into more applications. The town of Cary is such a great example for two reasons. One is, you know, by by partnerships like we have with Microsoft and SAS, being able to take democratized technology to the people who have the problem that they want to solve uh, and to enable them to creatively solve those problems using these sophisticated technologies um, is, a, is, you know, that's ultimately how all of this is going to scale. Um, and the second thing is we're seeing is it's a great example of that connected environment, right? Where it's not just about individual sensors, it's about understanding the flood water, the weather, uh, everything across the town. And then I think there's an important component to all of this as well, which is the town of Cary is executing in an incremental fashion. They're starting mm -hmm. with an important part of uh, stormwater uh, prediction and management, um, but then that gives them optionality to add new sources to their digital feedback loops and to really start taking advantage of those systems of systems um, to really transform their entire town. That's a very important point, Sam. There's a very important lesson here. Digital transformation is not easy. And it's always a technology problem, but it's never just a technology problem. It's a problem of technology, people, and processes. So as organizations like the town of Cary embark on that journey, don't try to boil the ocean and convert everything. Start with one to two to three projects that fall within a core competency of the organization. Public safety and emergency response are core capabilities and responsibilities of the municipality. Building a chatbot to automate hiring probably is not. So by you know proving success with these key initiatives, everyone sees the impact, sees the ROI of digital transformation. And it also, as you mentioned, makes it easier to connect other initiatives. For example, now that you have flood water prediction, you could connect that to a transportation management system and use that, for example, for traffic routing and infrastructure planning. Uh, a digital twin of the watershed, now you can use for monitoring, modeling, and planning. And so it naturally grows the impact uh, around the core competencies. And that's the way we recommend and uh, you know, congratulate the town of Cary for going about it this way. And I think it behooves technology vendors like SaaS and Microsoft to make sure the tools, the automation, the integration is there to support that we can broaden the scope of digital transformation uh, for our customers. You know, there's never been a better time to get started with all of this. Uh, you know, we really have reached an inflection point uh, where connecting assets uh, has never been easier and getting ready for this next wave of uh, connected environments. So, it's uh, it's great to be partnering with you, Oliver, and I look forward to seeing what all of the different uh, partners and customers out there are going to be doing with uh, our joint offerings. Same here. Wonderful partnership. The wave is happening now. Come ride it with us. Thank you. Thank you, Sam.